Hey, what's up guys? Brad here. So it is Friday. It is the Robinhood Roundup. 10 stocks that Robinhood investors are buying in the last week. And I pulled this data from robintrack.net. Okay, so let's dig into these top 10 stocks that Robinhood investors are buying. Um, and, you know, just so you guys know, this is kind of my first step in the screening process to look at these basically three different criteria for a stock, okay? The first one is how many super investors own the stock? And you can find that information here in Dataroma. Uh, type the ticker symbol and you can see how many of these super investors down here actually own the stock in their portfolio. So that's the first one. The second one is earnings yield and return on invested capital. Now I have those kind of bundled together as one criteria because this is the magic formula criteria from Joel Greenblatt. Earnings yield is a measure of how cheap a company is and return on invested capital is a measure of how good a business is. When you combine those two, you get um, kind of the, the best combination of good and cheap, which is really what we want as investors. We want great businesses and we want uh, a compelling purchase price. So these are two great uh, metrics to look at. And the last one here, is there a value investors club write-up on the stock? So you can come over here to Value Investors Club. This is also created by Joel Greenblatt, legendary hedge fund manager. Essentially, uh, what you have here is some of the best investors in the world submitting their investment ideas. And there's a panel that decides which uh, investment thesis theses should, be, uh, should uh, make it through. To, so for the community to see, okay? So this is an awesome place. If you're thinking about investing in a company, come here to Value Investors Club, see if there's a write-up on it, and you can get kind of a high-level thesis from you know, uh, a, a good investor who's, who's written the company up, you know, what, what they think is gonna happen, uh, how good of an investment is the company, and how did they arrive at that you know, in investment idea. So those are the kind of three metrics I like to look for in my initial screen of companies to determine whether or not they're worth looking further into. So let's see how these 10 top Robinhood stocks held up against these three criteria. So the first one here, Genius Brands, uh, education company for kids. Uh, you can see market cap about half a billion. It's, it's a you know fairly small company. Uh, you can see a ton of fluctuation in the price here. I mean, from from a high of eight to a low down near twenty cents. That's what is that like a forty x maybe a thirty five x difference in price from low to high. And this low to high is in twenty twenty. It's not the last year. It's really just the last five months effectively. Uh, you can see the price today is around six. No super investors own Genius Brands. Uh, and there's there's really no earnings. It, it's a company in startup mode. Uh, they're losing money, you know, like, like startups do. Um, but you know, personally guys, I don't like to invest in startups that are losing money, okay? It's just, it's, it's, really like gambling in my opinion. You know, sure there's there's a huge potential upside if if the company makes it. Um, but if you look at the track record of companies, you know, that are losing money, how many of those turn out to be great investments? It's not good. It's not good, guys. So that this is more of a gambling play in my opinion. And there's no value investors club right up. Actually, I have seen more gambling plays in this list this this last week for Robinhood investors than I've seen in the two previous weeks. This is only the third week that I'm doing this. But guys, this this is a little scary, okay? Just 
just to back up a little bit and look at this, look at the big picture of this list, we've got three airlines, Spirit, Delta, and American Airlines. And those are really the only companies on this list that are earning money. And on top of that, these earnings figures, I mean, these are from the first quarter of 2020, okay? So I, I would venture to guess that these three airlines, as of now, are losing money, okay? They're, they're in the red. So essentially, every company, all 10 companies on this list are losing money, all right? So that, that is concerning, but let's keep going. So airlines, I'll just say uh, Warren Buffett sold out of airlines. Warren Buffett is the best, basically the best investor, the best modern investor, okay? Based on what he's worth today. Uh, and he's made it all through investing. Now, airlines, I mean, you got to realize airlines have very thin profit margins. And so the question I would ask you is how soon are there going to be people sitting in middle seats on airlines? Okay, Try to imagine that. We're in this age of a pandemic. Are you going to want to be squished, sardined between two people in a middle seat on an airline? And then the, the follow-up question to that is, can airlines be profitable if they're not selling that middle seat? And across the board, the answer is no. The airlines need to fill pretty much all of their seats in order to be profitable. That's how thin the margins are in airlines. So, you know, there's three airlines on this list. You got to ask yourself, at what point are airlines going to be making money again? Are they going to have full planes? Okay. Are we going to be back? How long until we're back to how many people were flying in January and February. So, you know, I'm quite concerned about airlines in the probably two to four year uh, range. They're getting a ton of support from the government, obviously, but that's not necessarily going to help equity investors. Okay. Airlines are going to continue having planes that fly. The question is, how long will equity investors be impaired? on those investments. So that's all I'll say about airlines. I don't really like airlines at any price right now, just because, well, first of all, I don't need to have an opinion about every company in order to do well as an investor. You know, Warren Buffett says, you know, if you want to do well, stay within your circle of competence, uh, know what you don't know, and stay there. So I don't have any interest in airlines. But anyway, obviously, uh, some of you do. Uh, X Spa, Express Spa. So this, this is a company, they have spas in airports, okay? And they're actually coming out, they're, they're doing, they're getting into the COVID testing arena. So that makes sense, right? You go to an airport, um, you know, you want to get tested, before you get on the plane, maybe maybe it's mandatory to get tested at some point before you get on a plane. So this is kind of a play on, you know, the, the pandemic, which, you know, I'd have to dig pretty deep into this to get comfortable um, treating this as a play on the pandemic. But, you know, it's a very small company, under 50 million market cap. If you're familiar with the magic formula, uh, the magic formula doesn't even look at companies that are less than 50 million market cap. So very small company. You can see huge fluctuation in the stock price. Um, you know, no super investors. Not, they're not making any money. No value investors club right up. I'm out. Uh, Luckin Coffee. So this is a Chinese um, coffee chain. Okay. Uh, huge tank. I mean, look at that. That's that's an insane drop, almost. A, I mean, what is that? a ninety-seven ish percent drop? That's crazy. Uh, just in twenty twenty, and you know, bounced back a little bit. It's at five fifty, 
Now there is one super investor who owns uh, Luckin Coffee. So that's something. Some some great investor has you know put their money on this in in the first quarter they put some money. So certainly a lot higher than than 550 that they put money in. So that might be worth uh, looking at. You know, again, there's no earnings, no value investors club write up. I'm not super interested in this one. Uh, so this is uh, Vizzle. This is a play on, um, yeah, Vizlink. Viz I was looking at this one. So I believe they do they do real time video surveillance. So it's a play on you know all of these protests that are happening. Uh, surveillance technology. Uh, very small, 88 million. Uh, you got a very big fluctuation, 10x fluctuation in price this year. Uh, again, there's not much happening here, so I'm not super interested in this one. And then here you have Hertz, rental car company. Now, I believe Hertz filed for bankruptcy, okay? So I'm quite concerned that investors are piling into Hertz because they saw this massive price drop from about $20 to 50 cents, a 40X price drop, okay? Uh, but you guys, you guys gotta understand, when a company declares bankruptcy, uh, in pretty much every case of that, the equity investors are wiped out zero equity investors lose all of their money in the stock okay so you know not looking any deeper into this i don't see any value in hertz for equity investors now i haven't researched it there's two super investors that owned hertz in the first quarter of 2020 they certainly may have sold by now uh, there's a short Write up in Value Investors Club from May 2019, which means, you know, it was a thesis that someone was saying, hey, you should think about shorting Hertz, which means betting against it, betting that the stock is going to go down. Clearly, the stock went down. So, you know, that was probably a great play to, to short the stock um, back in May of last year. But I mean, the declared bankruptcy, guys. So so I don't know what's happening with Hertz. Uh, airline, I'm not going to talk about that. I already did. Nikola, okay? Nikola is an electric truck company. Now, it, it's I love this name, right? You got Tesla, the electric car company. And then you have Nikola, the electric truck company. Obviously, Nikola Tesla was... Um, what he, he, I think he invented direct current electricity, or something like that. Um, this just IPO'd, I believe, or there was a there was a merger. So, um, Vecto IQ, I believe, is now trading under Nikola, and Vecto IQ was a very hot stock recently. People are thinking, oh, maybe it's it's the next Tesla. So. You know, th this could be interesting to watch. Um, literally a couple days ago, uh, this stock came online. So, um, you know, no earnings. It's a startup, but it could be it could be an interesting one to watch. Uh, CIDM. This is Cinedime. So this is, uh, I guess, Cinedyne just partnered with the world's largest smart TV solution provider, Viewed. Okay, so you know, uh, startup in the kind of smart TV space. No earnings, no super investors. There is a write-up for Value Investors Club. So if you want to, you know, dig into this, uh, you can check that out from April of 2019. Uh, Again, huge uh, swings in the stock price this year. Uh, and then you got Spirit Airlines. I already talked about airlines. 
So, you know, that's, that's what we've got, guys. We've got basically 10 companies that aren't making money. Um, you've got a company that filed for bankruptcy recently. You've got three airlines and you've got a bunch of small startups. So, uh, I, you know, I, as, as an investor, I, I get this, this desire to bet on long shots, knowing that, hey, if it plays out, you know, maybe I'll, I'll hit it big, right? But uh, I really caution against that approach to investing. Investing, I mean, it's the, the most powerful element of investing is the concept of compounding. And in order to compound, you need your money to continue working for you. Okay. If you're making these long shot bets that are just, you know, you're, you're losing money on, on basically all of them. Okay. Is how these end up working out most of the time. It's really hard to grow your basket of money over time. It's really tough to do that when you're making these long shot bets. And, you know, I'm not seeing much at all in the way of, you know, value investments in today's market. But, you know, instead of buying things like these, I would really encourage you to just let, let some money build up if you're not finding uh, anything that's compelling yet. Uh, we're going to have, I have a feeling we're going to have some pretty good opportunities in the next three to six months to put money to work where your upside to downside uh, probabilities are quite favorable. Okay. That's really what we're looking for as investors. I want an 80% chance of doubling my money in three years uh, with a 20% chance of maybe losing a little bit. I want it really skewed on the upside in order for me to be making investments. And I'm not seeing it here, okay? So that's all I got, guys. Smash a thumbs up if you like these Robinhood roundups uh, that I do each week. And please hit that subscribe button. I am closing in on 1,000 subscribers. That's That's been my target for a while. And I'm at, I think, 807 as of today. So join me. Join me in this journey of compounding our wealth together. All right, guys, that's all I got. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.